I am learning uh, data science and artificial intelligence from IIT Madras. My question is, this inexorable technology is bound to enter every nook and corner of modern industries. Can ISRO and DRDO also benefit from this? Uh, as I would be glad to put my mind in developing national strength instead of increasing profits of US-based mega corporations. How crucial can this be in the near future? I mean, a very good question. Uh, data science and artificial intelligence, machine learning, all of that is crucial in today's world. Uh, it has military applications, it has non-military applications, it has geopolitical applications. It's all about controlling the world and infiltrating the minds of people and so much more. I mean, uh, with data science you and artificial intelligence and machine learning, you can do things like targeted advertising, targeted propaganda, ad advanced image recognition, facial recognition, speech recognition. You can do war gaming. You can do predictive analytics. You can do forecasting of all kinds of things. You can indulge in bio warfare. You can create new kinds of bio agents. Uh, you can discover new kinds of bio bio agents using data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence. You can do psychological profiling of people based on their public social media profile, their aggregated, uh, aggregated social media uh, behavior and trends and patterns. Then you can indulge in cyber war warfare. You can create intelligent autonomous weapons systems combined with robotics that can be a game changer. You can uh, do target recognition, combat simulation, combat training, threat monitoring, situation aware situational awareness in the battle space domain and creating an integrated battle space when it comes to a warfare on a uh, in a real time manner. So there is so much you can do with data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, neural networks, all of those things. The question is, is India pursuing these things or not? We have ISRO, we have DRDO, we have uh, uh, HAL and all these other uh, organizations. Are they agile enough? Are they pursuing these technologies? We also have quantum computing, which is a very important uh, technology, a very important and interesting frontier of science that is currently under development. Is India pursuing that? Uh, in case India is pursuing all these things, then yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it would be great to have intelligent uh, young people uh, joining the effort in building up these technologies, developing these technologies for India's benefit. The easy solution is to migrate to the West and work as a as a glorified cyber coolie to build uh, to build the platforms for the West, which they will use eventually in the long run against all other countries, right? So in the 1960s and 1970s, lots of Indians, especially from Kerala, etc., they went to the Gulf countries and they exchanged their time for a little bit of money and they built up what is now all the gl glittering cities of Dubai, Abu Dhabi, all that. They, those were fishing villages. It is Indian labor and Indian talent that constructed all these cities. But who owns the cities? It is the Arabs who own the cities. And what Indians got in return was a little bit of money, which they sent back to to, to their families in, in Kerala, etc. Right. So the same thing is now happening in the cyber domain. Indians want to be middle class, want to be want to live comfortable middle class lives. Uh, so they will be, they are willing to exchange their time for a little bit of money and create all of this priceless intellectual property for the West. So what India needs to do is give Indians the opportunity to do the same for India. I mean, we need the private sector to, to contribute in this and the government also to contribute, contribute in this. Uh, so DRDO is, a, is, a, is an organization that could really uh, contribute a lot to that. But unfortunately, DRDO is very antiquated. It is ossified. The kind of system they have is, is it, it, uh, the kind of structure that DRDO has. It's, it's very bureaucratic, very, very stratified. It, it belongs in the 1960s. I mean, you, you, they have, I don't know, 25,000 employees or so, maybe 30,000 employees. And only 5,000 of these employees at most are scientists. So the majority, more than 20,000 employees are non-scientific personnel. And all the money that goes into DRDO, most of it is utilized in the salaries and all the other benefits that these non-scientific personnel get. So the majority of the money that goes into DRDO is used for non-scientific work. So these organizations, they need reforms. They can be radically reformed and made more agile, made more um, driven. And in that, if we if we can do that, then they, they could really contribute, they could really transform the country. 
So I hope that happens. And uh, the thing is, this these technologies they're going to like like Akash says they they're going to enter every nook and cranny of the modern world. They're going to penetrate your daily lives to an extent that you will not even realize. So we need to also uh, we need to ensure that India needs to ensure it doesn't get left behind. Uh, so it's so the answer is it's really crucial that india develops these technologies the government needs to push this the private sector needs to get involved and if that happens it will be great for for young people in india people who want to contribute to the country they will be able to use whatever whatever uh, skills they learn whatever knowledge they acquire uh, in in the course of their studies and they'll be able to use all this knowledge and and these skills for the benefit of the country so it is crucial that india develops these technologies india gets involved in this and i hope that people like akash young people like akash and many others like him uh, will get the opportunity to use their talents for the benefit of india instead of building up the intellectual capital for the west